I've got a PlayStation collection for you today, as I have a couple of pieces of news, the first of which is regarding the PS3. I know, a bit of a callback. As Sony Computer Entertainment America has agreed to a settlement that could see them compensating upward of 10 million PS3 owners for the removal of Linux support. Now, Ars Technica got hold of a court document which basically includes the terms of the potential deal, which is after more than half a decade in court. Now, this is a preliminary class action settlement that has yet to be approved by a federal judge, but if it does pass, Sony will pay the plaintiffs $55 upon proof of eligibility for the payout. Now, basically, this will include owners who use the other OS features to install Linux on their original model PS3s prior to Sony removing the feature. Basically, this is anywhere from November 2006 to April 2010. Now, if you want your 55 bucks, you must quote a test under oath to their purchase of the product and installation of Linux, provide proof of their purchase or serial number and PlayStation Network signing ID, and submit some proof of their use of the other OS functionality. However, that's not all they're giving out. Sony will also pay $9 to those who can prove knowledge or, or intention to use the Linux functionality on their PS3s during that period. Now you might remember, if you cast your mind way back, that the firmware update that removed Linux came in the spring of 2010 and basically got rid of the ability to install other OSs on the original FAT model PS3. Now, several people then filed a suit against Sony beginning later that year, resulting in a class action case that found people attempted to reach settlement various times over six years. Now, it's going to be a while before we find out if this goes through. A judge won't approve the settlement until mid-July, but uh, the document does say that it's just, sorry, it is likely to move forward. Sony did re reach legal segment, sorry. I'm trying to get in some English there, sorry. So only reached legal settlements for PS3 users in the past, most notably after the data breach back in 2011. Now, 55 bucks doesn't sound like much, but when you're timesing it by millions of people, it starts to add up. And the next thing is much more current, as we have some comments regarding the PlayStation 4. Now, obviously, much has been made of the PlayStation Neo. Of course, it wasn't mentioned at E3, but there are still reports surrounding the mysterious console. However, we now have some comments from Shuhei Yoshida that the PS4 Neo will complement the PS4, not to surpass it, and also said that the Neo will not shorten the PS4 life cycle. And he made these comments when speaking to GameWelt.tv and he said, quote, New high-end PS4 is still PS4, so the life cycle is not going to be shorter. He didn't go into any more detail about the Neo, however, he did touch on Microsoft's reveal of the Scorpio at E3, and he said, quote, I was not expecting them to talk about Project Scorpio. It was, it's very, very super interesting what they're doing. Now, obviously, it's hard to judge without an official, like, Here's the, uh, the terms A, B, and C in a statement, like kind of what we had from Microsoft at E3. But judging from these comments from Yoshida and what we've heard from Sony in the past, it seems like they're going to follow a similar model to what Microsoft are doing with Scorpio, whereas, look, this is a more powerful version of the current hardware where you're going to get improved versions of the current games. But if you don't want to get this console, you're still going to be able to play the same games that you can on Xbox One that you can on Scorpio, just obviously not as pretty or not as fast frame rate or whatever the compromise happens to be. On it, probably on a game by game basis. So they run the same games, they're fully compatible with each other, probably got cross play with each other, but obviously one is more powerful than the other and will run the games better than the other. That seems like what they're going for here, which to be honest is probably the best option given what we're having with this sort of new potential change for console generations. This is definitely different from what we've had in the past and could potentially be a game changer for the future, future of console gaming. So, there you have it. That's my Sony collection for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.